Hi, good morning, everyone. So today we are going to talk about uh, the interconnects for scale-ups. So over the, uh, over the last couple of days, we heard a lot of keynote speech, uh, speakers and presentations that talk about the importance of interconnects for scale-ups. So here we're going to talk about the two technologies, what we know about, the UAL and Ethernet. And uh, we're going to talk, talk about the three uh, approaches to do that, doing that, UAL, UAL over Sue, and Rocky. And I'm Sri Vigilsna, and here's my colleague, Srinivas Gangam. Hi. First, first, let's look at the two, comp two uh, uh, approaches of doing that. Like once we have the UAL, which is based on memory semantics that use load store and atomic kind of uh, memory transactions, and we have Ethernet, which has UAL over Ethernet or scale-up Ethernet. And these are basically, again, memory transactions which are encapsulated over an optimized Ethernet header. So as we heard it recently, too, that, okay, the memory transactions can be multiple transactions which, are, which can be packed in a, in a given packet so that we can amortize the uh, overhead of the IPG and the Ethernet header. For RDMA transport, it basically has the complete header stack of IP, uh, Ethernet IP and the IB header. So this dis distinction is very important as we basically go over the performance results, what we're going to show later. So looking at the key advantages for scale-up networking. The first one is load balancing. When we say load balancing, the load balancing can happen at a very fine granular. Basically, we can do load balancing at 256 bytes, all the memory transactions that have been read from the compute can be load balanced across all the rails, so the rails all can be optimized for high bandwidth. The second one is the latency characteristics. For UAL, if you look at it, uh, the, the DL flit is always 640 bytes, so we have a constant latency for UAL. But for Ethernet, as we like, heard from the previous presentation too, the latency can be variable depending on the packets, uh, uh, packet size, depending on how many memory transactions you're packing within a given packet. And with memory semantics, one of the biggest advantage what we can have is it can be a push model. When you say push model, uh, once the compute is done, we can directly push the data from the compute tile to the networking tile, and it basically doesn't incur the, uh, the, the knock RTT delay, what we uh, see in an SOC. And all the transactions, what are basically started or like, uh, at, at the compute tile, they all can be uh, completed out of order. When I say completed out of order, all the transactions are like load balanced across the rails, and all these transactions can complete as, uh, by using the maximum bandwidth, and then uh, the completion can be done after that. So we can get the maximum utilization of the bandwidth. From the implementation point of view, like uh, a lot of choices about this implementation depends on the scale-up switch, what you're going to deploy in the network. For example, if at all, the switch is capable of doing like uh, packets per second with no, like, uh, no limitation, uh, then uh, the packing logic, what you can have in the accelerator can be very efficient. It can basically pack only one memory transaction within a packet. But that also adds the inherent late, like a bandwidth uh, penalty because we have the overhead for a given transaction, which is the Ethernet header. And, uh, and for the QS behavior, like depending on the number of uh, traffic classes you have, especially the, uh, the no loss traffic classes, these traffic classes are required in Ethernet because we need to separate the request and response channels. Which, uh, which are different for Ethernet, but, but for UL, we already have a request and response channel which are separated out at the, at the EPLI layer, so it can get better, uh, better performance without any QS properties. But here for Ethernet, we need to have separate uh, queues, and these need to be scheduled properly for end-to-end -end workload. All these implementation choices have a direct impact on latency and the bandwidth what we can observe in the network. This is a typical, simple uh, you know, like framework, what we're showing up. We have seen it, multiple flavors of it here. Like we can see on the left-hand side, we have a compute tile. Right-hand side, we have a networking tile. And within the networking tile, the TX and the RX are connected to the switch. And here, the switch can be any uh, out-of-the-shelf Ethernet switch. And here, as the XPU is uh, like done and wanted to tra like transfer the payload, it basically needs to load balance across all the networking tiles. 
And here, as I was saying before, the load balancing can happen very efficiently because it can load balance at 256 bytes. And, and as the transactions arrive at the Ethernet tile, it basically needs to go to the packing logic first. When you talk about the packing logic, uh, the, the, it's, it's basically what it is trying to do is pack multiple of these memory transactions within an Ethernet packet. And it can be work conserving, but at the same time, work conserving and not packing basically will affect your bandwidth. But if at all you pack more, you inherit adds, adds latency. So that's kind of the, uh, the, the drawback of packing. Then it goes to the queuing and scheduling logic. And here again, as we talked about the queuing, like we need to have separate the, uh, the requests and response channels so that we basically can have the end-to-end -end workflow. Next, it, next it, this is go to the header encapsulation. Here it can be an optimized L2 header. It can be ESON or it can be a SU header. Then at the link layer, it basically needs to have end-to-end -end, like, reliability, so we basically need to at least support the LLR capability within the link layer, so that we can at least have link to li link uh, uh, protected. FEC by itself is not sufficient here. The reason is it only like, uh, corrects bit errors, but not end-to-end -end, uh, reliability. Then it, the FI is like, common across uh, Ethernet and UL. And on the receive side, uh, we basically have a parsing logic that can parse the packet, and then it needs to unpack and basically write the packets into the memory. For UL framework, it looks simpler. Uh, the reason it is simpler is that, okay, it doesn't have the packing logic. It doesn't have the scheduling logic. All that stuff is, to some extent, incorporated in the D TL and DL layer because DL inherently has separate channels for requests and responses. So here, the, the biggest takeaway from this here is uh, the logic is simplified here because the, uh, the interfaces are much more sim sim uh, similar because the NOC already has an AXI kind of an interface or a, a load store kind of an interface, which ties very well with the TL, uh, uh, UPLI interface. Here, the amount of logic what we have and the, uh, the area saving what we can have is significant because of this. And now we go over the Rocky workload. Here, like we have a simplified Rocky uh, workload, uh, basically talking about the control path, which is not performance critical. Here, it, the connection, the memory registration, and the key uh, exchanges can happen at a very slow rate. From the core operations point of view, we only need to support RDMA write and write with immediate. The reason for that is, OK, all the transactions are bulk trans transfers, and we only wanted to do uh, transfers by load balancing the large payload. And what is not required is the send and receive operations. So from the, from the feature set point of view, multipathing is very important because okay, a large I.O. needs to be load balanced across all the paths, so the, all the packets need to be sprayed across all the paths which are available, so that's very critical. Out of order delivery is important. Uh, when I say out of order, like order delivery, it means like every packet needs to have an address so that it can be placed in the, uh, in the destination GPU as and when the packet arrives without waiting for reorder or any other complex logic. From the congestion point of view, we need to have selective acts and NACs. Uh, selective acts are basically like as the packets are basically written into the memory, they can be act back. And NACs is for any of the congestion related issues when a packet is dropped or uh, then uh, we can send an NAC so that the end-to-end the -end reliability will uh, resend the packet. And the, from the completion point of view, we can do a RDMA write with immediate uh, so that uh, a completion can be sent to the destination accelerator. So from the rocky semantics point of view, like uh, the biggest thing is the load balancing. As we talked about, a large I.O. now needs to be partitioned across multiple DMA engines within the, uh, uh, within the networking tile. And depending on the I.O. size, the, the the partition of these uh, this, uh, jobs across the networking tiles can be chunky. If at all it's a small uh, transfer that needs to be done, then the load balancing is not efficient across the networking tiles. And here, most of the day, like, uh, Rocky engines are a pull model. When I say pull model, usually uh, the, the transactions, uh, the DMA thread is sitting in the networking tile, wherein it needs to pull the data from the host memory or the GP memory, and then it needs to uh, reorder the uh, transactions and form a packet and send it over the interface. 
Here, uh, from the rail optimization point of view, like uh, the, uh, the bandwidth across these rails may not be completely load balanced to the extent of what memory semantics can achieve, because he, here the I.O. chunking can be a little bit more grand, like a little more, more chunkier. And for the act generation, again, we have the same issue when we are generally like writing the packet uh, at the receiving side to write into the memory. It needs to wait for all the acts of the memories, which are like memory transactions send on the lock, uh, for the acts to come back to generate the act for the packet. And from the resiliency point of view, again, as we talked about, it's a hierarchical kind of a load balancing. A IO chunk is basically partitioned to multiple smaller chunks within the network tile, and if at all a link is lost within a network tile, then the load balancing across the networking tiles needs to be a little bit adjusted, and that gets a little bit more complicated. Going over the simple, like, again, uh, the XPU kind of a framework here, is the same thing what we talked about before. We have a DM engine here, which is kind of reading the transactions from the, uh, like, from the memory and then sending it out, and we have the queuing and scheduling logic, and most of the logic can be similar down the road. Here I talked about uh, having a, a, like, uh, a Ethernet IP and AIB header, but it can be a SU optimized header too here, which uh, can reduce the load. Okay, from the workflow comparison point of view, like I'll just walk through that quickly. Uh, we went over that, like load balancing, uh, it can be very like, efficient for uh, UAL, and for Rocky, it can be a little bit chunkier. For uh, the, the switch latency, can be the same across all, like it will be the 200 to 300 nanoseconds. The write responses are very efficient for UL, and for Rocky, they can be a little bit more uh, like delayed because of the ACK accumulation. And the bandwidth utilization is very good for UL. From the functionality comparison, again, here is the same thing what we talked about before. Okay, load balancing is efficient. Okay, the DMA thread is pull and push. And the packing logic is there for UL uh, over Ethernet, which potentially can add some latency. And for uh, channel-based scheduling, uh, like for, uh, for UAL, as we talked about, the requests and responses have separate channels, but for Ethernet, we need to separate them out to separate queues. From the attributes, uh, one of the biggest thing here is in network collectives. Uh, in network, uh, network collectives are basically inherently supported in a memory, memory semantics kind of UL for UAL. For UAL over Ethernet, I think we need to have a standardization to basically get there. And for Rocky, it's pretty hard to basically do any INC kind of operations because of the connection-based overhead what we need to encounter. And from the ecosystem point of view, UL is a new standard. It's upcoming, so the ecosystem is not yet there. But for Ethernet, it is an established ecosystem. Error resiliency, we covered that. Okay, here, uh, like, uh, the only thing what I want to cover here is the lane degradation. Uh, when we have two lanes uh, uh, between an accelerator and uh, uh, the switch, if one of the lane dies, then we basically can still uh, uh, operate at 50% bandwidth. And for load balancing, we talked about that. It can be efficient for memory semantics. End-to-end -end reliability, without link layer retry, we need to have end-to-end -end transport level kind of reliability. And the FEC has its own limitations. Now, Srini is going to cover the performance. Number. Yeah, so uh, here we just uh, uh, take a stab at it uh, to compare bandwidth as well as the latency for all the uh, three uh, technologies that we talked about. Uh, so we just looked uh, at the Hackney Hackney model, which is just the, the total time is taken is based on your uh, uh, bytes versus bytes and uh, bytes versus uh, bandwidth, and you have a startup time. So in the case of UAL, we have uh, two, uh, two uh, modes, compressed and uncompressed header, and for each, what is the overhead is, uh, is, is shown there. And whereas for uh, UAL over Ethernet or SU, we have a fixed uh, Ethernet header, which is uh, uh, 14 bytes Ethernet header, which is the minimum that, that is needed. On top of that, for every 256 byte, we need a control header, which is uh, uh, addressed to a memory transaction. And on top of that, everything need to be have a uh, response. And for Rocky, uh, we said we have L L2, L3, L4 header, and you need to have ACK packet. Uh, so for every data that you need to transfer, so here the uh, the listed overheads uh, are, are shown in this picture. And uh, for the latency side, uh, 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 for the UAL, uh, there are two components: as a fixed component and a variable component. Uh, we 
uh, for the UAL, since there's no packing or unpacking, we said, okay, a switch takes a 200 nanosecond latency, and uh, accelerator side, uh, UAL, uh, RX, TX, uh, uh, TLDL layers take 100 nanosecond latency. Those, so that covers 300 nanosecond. And for UAL over Ethernet, in addition to these, uh, assuming switch latency is still 200 nanosecond, uh, we have packing unpacking latency, which is around 100 and nanosecond, which uh, we accounted. Uh, for, uh, uh, for uh, whereas the, for Rocky, uh, you need to pull the data, there is a startup latency to pull the data from uh, NOC. Uh, this does not assume uh, the ring bell software overhead. This, this latency comparison that we did assumes that the uh, ring bell is already provided, and it just takes the uh, latency for the pulling the data from uh, the memory time. So here is just a, a graph uh, which shows that, uh, uh, let's uh, concentrate on the uh, uh, yellow line there for UAL over Ethernet or SU. So when you have a smaller packet size which you want to send, there is an overhead that we need to pay uh, where your bandwidth efficiency goes uh, down. And as you pack more, your efficiency goes uh, higher. At, at, at around 512, between 512, 768 byte size, uh, UAL and uh, 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 SU catches up uh, uh, with, uh, with uh, uh, in terms of bandwidth efficiency. Whereas Rocky, since it has much more overhead than the SU, though uh, uh, the, uh, it initially for smaller packet sizes, the efficiency is uh, uh, very low. But it catches up pretty good as you increase your MTU sizes for Rocky. And if you, if you make IPZ zero for close to zero for SU, it's a pretty good catches up with uh, 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 UAL. Yeah, I think one thing to note here is that, okay, the, uh, the uh, uh, SU can never catch up with UAL performance to some extent. The reason is that UAL is inherently a memory transaction, okay. but like uh, any Ethernet packet will have an overhead which is on top of the memory transactions what is carrying. So it can never catch up, but it is getting very close as uh, uh, the packet size is increasing. Yeah, so here, uh, uh, thanks for bringing that point. So here, one thing that we need to add is uh, uh, for the bandwidth, if you, in order to get the bandwidth, you need to pack more. So that will inherently incur the latency. So let's go to the next shot. So here is the latency comparison. So this is assuming uh, a transaction latency, that means a packet latency uh, from an accelerator knock tile to the, uh, the receiving accelerator knock tile. So in the case of UAL, uh, since it's always 256 byte transaction, so uh, the, the, the latency is fixed. Uh, for the, if you compare the red line and yellow line, yellow line is the one that is for UAL over Ethernet or SU, assuming one accelerator talking to one accelerator. So the green line shows that uh, when an accelerator talking to 32 accelerator, so it, it has 32 open contexts, so it needs to keep packing to get the bandwidth efficiency that it needs. The more the packing, the more the latency that it will incur. Time, time, um, time check. Yeah. I think this is the, uh, uh, this is the for the Rocky, uh, uh, as, the, as the transaction size increases, you need to pull the data from the net, from the knock tile, so the jitter in the reordering the uh, packet, reordering the uh, memory tile transactions will add additional latency shown here. I think, yeah, so. Yeah, I think, it, uh, so here at Upscale AI, we are like building up a, uh, a, a common grounds up architecture called uh, Skyhammer, which supports both Ethernet and UL. And uh, uh, we basically, like from the, uh, from the consortium point of view, we are basically looking for partnerships and for uh, commonality across these two protocols. The reason for that is uh, like, like there's some, like some uh, ec the ecosystem of Ethernet is very uh, matured, but UL is just catching up. Here we had some of the action items which we can take uh, like from, uh, to make this pro both the protocols coexist in, in the same ecosystem. That's all, thank you. Thank you,